What is up investors? I'm TPG Investing and today I want to talk to you about some SPACs. I did a video on SPACs last month and overall most viewers seem to enjoy it. Now SPACs have been taking a bashing in the last couple of months and although I agree that some SPACs were way overhyped and overpriced, it seems to be irrelevant and even what can be seen as very good SPACs with proven teams behind them or great target companies have fallen to very attractive prices. So usually in my videos we talk about one company in detail, but today we're going to discuss four SPACs that have dropped to very attractive prices and in my opinion are currently a bargain, all for different reasons. Before we get into the video, if you like the content, can I ask you to smash that like button? It literally costs nothing, but it helps me out so much. I'm aiming for 100 likes in this video, can we make it happen? It shows me that you not only want to see more content like this, but it helps the video get seen by showing the YouTube algorithm that viewers like this type of content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video with the potential to make you money. Make sure you watch the entire video and don't enter into any stock blindly without viewing all the information on offer. Leave a comment down below if you were invested in any of these companies and what price you bought at and what your price targets are. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. At the time of this video, I do not hold a position in any of these companies, but I have been looking into each one of these closely in the last few weeks. Now let's get into it. So first things first, a very quick overview of what a SPAC is for those who might not know. SPAC stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, a shell company that has no business or assets and is designed to raise money through an IPO in order to acquire or merge with a private company. Each share is usually valued at $10 and the SPAC has up to 24 months to complete a merger. This $10 price is pretty much the share price floor up until the merger date. Once the SPAC finds a target company, there will be a shareholder vote whether or not to go ahead with the merger. And up until the point of the merger, shares are worth a minimum of $10. However, once the merger is completed, shares can go down as well as up on the open market. 2020 was a huge year for SPACs. It seen more companies go public through SPACs in the 12 months than any other previous year. And so far, over 300 companies have gone public through SPACs in 2021. There was very much a SPAC boom in 2020. Some SPACs were very successful and brought quality companies public. These include Virgin Galantic, QuantumScape and DraftKings. Each one reached incredible heights and even now sit far above their original SPAC prices. But there has been a lot of high profile drops of companies like Hylian, which traded as high as $58 but has dropped all the way back into the $9 range. Some of these companies were priced well above their true value, but currently some of these sit well below their true value. Now the job is to find which of those are likely to be successful and currently undervalued. Just to prove that they do still exist, an example of a company that went public by SPAC last year and has bounced back strongly this year is Playboy. This dropped from $16 to $11 in February, but in the past few weeks it has risen from $11 up to $30 and is currently traded in the mid-20s. So the first SPAC I want to talk about today is Atlas Crest Investment Corp ticker ACIC. When we look here we can see this stock had been trading in the 10 to 11 dollar range right up until the days before the announcement of the merger with Archer Aviation. In the week after the announcement the price rocketed up to its highest point of 1860 before rapidly dropping back into the 10 to 11 dollar range by early March and has been trading in that range since. The massive spike and rapid decline of the share price has little to do with the company itself and more to do with the general market correction taking place as this rise and drop is almost identical to the majority of SPACs. Let's take a quick look at the team behind the Atlas Crest Investment Corp. Because usually a good or bad team can make or break a SPAC merger and it's important to look at their history and track record. Ken Molis is the chairman of both Atlas Crest Investment Corp 1 and 2. Mr. Molis founded in a CEO of Molis & Company, a global independent investment bank and its affiliate Molis Asset Management an alternative asset management firm with approximately $6 billion under management across private equity, direct lending, credit funds, structured products. Since its inception, Molus has advised approximately $3.5 trillion of transactions, including mergers and acquisitions, restructurings and recapitalizations. Mr. Molus led Molus IPO in 2014 while being named Euromoney's Banker of the Year. Since its IPO, Molus has organically grown revenues by over 80% and has generated a total shareholder return of over 125%.
Prior to this, Ken worked at UBS, where he was president of UBS Investment Bank and previously joint global head of investment banking. He has 40 years of experience, having began his career as an investment banker in 1981. Michael Spilacy is CEO and director of ACIC 1 and 2. Mr. Spilacy has extensive experience in technology data and analytics, capital markets and private equity and has worked as an investor, investment banker and consultant. Mr. Spilacy was a senior managing director at Accenture, overseeing Accenture's asset management, wealth management and investment and trading businesses. Accenture is a multinational Fortune Global 500 professional services firm with 2020 revenues of over $44 billion. Prior to this, he was senior partner of asset and wealth management at PwC and also served as partner at Broadhaven Capital. Back in early February, Atlas announced his intention to merge with Archer Aviation and the transaction is expected to close in Q2 2021. Archer Aviation is a company in the aircraft industry that makes EV toll aircraft. Archer's mission is to advance the benefits of sustainable air mobility. Headquartered in California, Archer is creating the world's first electric airline that moves people throughout cities in a quick, safe, sustainable and cost-efficient manner. Archer is designing, manufacturing, operating a fully electric vehicle takeoff and landing aircraft that can carry four passengers for 60 miles at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour while producing minimal noise. Archer's team is focused on revolutionizing air travel. Basically what they're trying to create is the likes of a flying Uber or taxi service for use in major cities where traffic congestion will be a problem. As we can see here from the presentation, they used Manhattan to JFK as a perfect example. Any method by car would take over an hour. By helicopter is quick but extremely expensive, whereas, Archer aerial, whereas Archer's aerial ride sharing business would offer the quickest zero emissions and also cheapest method of travel. At the moment, the company is in its very early pre-revenue stage. In fact, they don't foresee revenue before 2024. And the plan is to have negative cash flow up until the end of 2025. However, if their calculations are correct, they could have massive revenues beyond that point in an emerging industry where no company yet is servicing. Archer currently have strategic partnerships in place with United Airlines and Stellantis. And although others in this industry also have key partnerships, Archer is the only one to have actual orders with $1 billion in orders from United Airlines and the option of another $500 million. Morgan Stanley estimates urban air mobility to be up to $1.5 to $3 trillion. The Archer team is headed by Brett Adcock and Adam Goldstein, who have experience starting and growing companies. The pair previously founded Vettery in 2013 before selling to a Swiss company in 2018 for an estimated price of $100 million. We can also see here the two of the team have come from rival company Whisk, with other team members coming from the airline and automotive industries. Altogether, they have a highly experienced team. Because this is in an industry that no one is currently operating in, and there would be a lot of safety and federal regulations that would need to be addressed before this sort of business could actually operate, especially with their aerial ride sharing business projection, as this would be the first of its kind. This has to be considered as a high risk, high reward investment. Although everything looks good about the company and the projections look fantastic, there's a lot that could go wrong here. However, I do believe when you look at the Atlas Crest team and Ken Mollis in particular, they are vastly experienced and knowledgeable and wouldn't be invested in this company if they didn't rate it as likely to succeed. Another prominent investor who has given Archer her vote of confidence is Kathy Wood of Arc Invest. As soon as the merger was announced, Arc Invest had been buying shares consistently. I subscribe to Arc Invest and their daily buy and sell reports. Arc added to their position as recently as Thursday, adding another 154,000 shares, bringing the total holding now up to 1.8 million. The second SPAC I want to talk about is Sustainable Opportunities Acquisition Corp, ticker SOAC. Sustainable Opportunities IPO'd in May 2020 with the intention to focus on suitable targets that have existing environmental sustainability practices or that may benefit from the founders and management team's commitment and expertise in executing such practices. Last month, SOAC announced that it had entered into a business combination with Deep Green Metals and the merger is expected to be completed in Q2 2021. SOAC identified Deep Green as a unique opportunity to solve the looming global battery metal supply problem of the clean energy transition while dramatically reducing the ESG footprint associated with conventional metal production. Together the company will become 
the metals company. When we look here at the one year chart, at first it looks like the stock has been very volatile, but in general it hasn't. The share price has been pretty static at $10 until January when it rose to its all time high in February of $12.72 before quickly dropping back to the $10 mark. Again, this has been the trend with all SPACs. So at this point, everyone is in agreement that renewable energy sources such as wind, hydro and solar are replacing the traditional fossil fuels and that EV is set to take over the automotive industry. All of these require batteries to store energy. Batteries are made from metals such as cobalt and nickel. And until now, we have been mining on land for these precious metals and this has an environmental issues of its own. This is where Deep Green are different. They have discovered that the precious metals needed to make batteries can be found in the rocks on the ocean's floor. If these can be taken from the seabed, then it is far more economically friendly than mining on land. As we can see here, the global electric vehicle sales are set to rocket in the coming decades, and major companies such as Ford and GM are committed to EV development. Altogether, this is set to push demand for battery metals way above supply. As well as the environmental benefits, the metal company predict that they would become the second lowest cost nickel producer in the world, with their full portfolio having potentially $31 billion estimated resources. The Nori D planned production to commence in 2024 and expected to reach close to 2 billion EBITDA in 2027. I encourage anyone who is thinking of investing in this company to go to the Deep Green website and take a look at their March 2021 investors presentation. There's a lot of information here regarding the company and the industry in general. The Sustainable Opportunities Acquisition Corporation team have extensive experience in operating and managing sustainability initiatives within a wide range of companies and industries throughout the US. The team is headed by CEO and director Scott Leonard. Scott has deep experience leading large scale successful transformations and a strong track record of driving superior shareholder returns. He has been CEO, CFO and president of various private and public equity companies, as well as senior vice president of commercial operations at HP. Scott began his career as an engagement manager at McKinsey and as an investment banker at DLJ. Other mentions in the team for Susan Tansky as principal. Susan's prior experiences included as director in Capital One's commercial bank and as an associate in the investment banking division of Goldman Sachs and Marcy Haymaker. Marcy has experience with Northern Pacific Group and was previously an associate at the Gores Group. Overall, I like Deep Green. I think they've got a very good business idea and they would clearly be eligible for any grants that would be available due to the fact so environmentally focused. But this is a high risk investment. Just like other mining companies, there's massive costs to be incurred before they ever see any revenue. And it even says in their presentation that they did not expect to have revenue until 2024. And they don't expect to have positive earnings until 2026. However, if their projections are correct, they could have fantastic earnings from that point forward. I would say there's probably no point investing in this company if you're not planning a long term hold. This is not one that will turn around huge profit percentages in a matter of months or even possibly years. The last two SPACs on my list are the final two SPACs from the Social Capital Head of Sophia Holdings, which is a partnership between investment firms, Social Capital and Head of Sophia. The two remaining SPACs are number four and number six, which have the tickers IPOD and IPOF. Social Capital Head of Sophia is headed by Social Capital CEO and SPAC King, Shamak Paliapatia. Shamath has been one of the most well-known names in the SPAC market for the past year. The first three of his head of Sophia SPACs have already merged with target companies and have been very successful. IPOA merged with Virgin Galactic and reached heights of over $60 in February before the downward SPAC trend started. But even now, its current trading price is around $30, which is still up 200% when considering the $10 SPAC price. IPOB merged with Open Door Technologies and again reached heights of nearly $40 and still remains 100% up on its $10 SPAC price. IPOC merged with Clover Health and today this is the only one of the mergers that has not proved successful yet. This reached its highest point of $17 near the end of December and has been dropping consistently since then. So when we look at SPACs we tend to look at the teams and try to evaluate if they're bringing quality companies public. In the case of Shamath, he has brought three companies public so far and two of the three have been highly successful. But importantly, the success of the two far outreached the failure of the other one. For example, if you had been able to buy one $10 share of each of the three companies, 
your $30 investment would have a current valuation of roughly $58. If you had sold each at their peak, that would have been $120 from a $30 investment. Sometimes timing can be everything with SPACs. Now, of the three SPACs yet to complete the mergers, IPOE has recently acquired its target company, and that target is financial services company SoFi. SoFi seems to be an up-and-coming fintech leader and could generate significant returns. IPOE is currently trading around $18, which is about 35% below its peak and about 80% above its original listing price. Although this seems like a good merger, I prefer to look at SPACs when they are still very close to the original listing price. And this brings us on to IPOD and IPOF. IPOD was launched last year and raised roughly $400 million. The teams at each one of the social capital SPACs have the same members plus one additional team member. For IPOD, this is Nirav Tolia, former CEO of Nextdoor and former CEO and co-founder of Opinions. As of today, IPOD is trading at $11.18. IPOF was also launched last year and raised about $1 billion. The extra team member at IPOF is former CEO of Twitter, Richard Costolo. As of today, IPOF is trading at under $11. When you consider the track record of Shamath in bringing companies public through SPACs, then I have to consider that both IPOD and IPOF are priced extremely cheaply at their current prices around $11. IPOE might also be priced very well around $17, but personally I think the real value and very little downside lies with D and F. These have not yet found target companies and I think these could easily gain 100% very quickly if news of a target company was received positively. This is just my opinion and it really depends on the target companies. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop it a like if you did. It really helps the video get out to more people. If you've watched all the way through then fair play. I hope I've shared some information with you that you weren't already aware of and I hope you found value in this video. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and bell notification. What is your price targets for these SPACs? Also, what SPACs do you guys think are worth looking into? I plan to do another video soon, as there's quite a few priced very low at the moment, that I, but I didn't want to make this video any longer than it is. Leave a comment down below, I want to hear your opinions. As always guys, this is just my opinion, and if anyone is looking into buying any of these companies, I encourage you to do your own research. As I said before, I'm not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice. Thanks for watching the video, catch you in the next one.